Welcome back to our tutorial on Activity 2.3 Playing With Lists. Today we're going to take a closer look at how to access information that's been stored in a static list. Now in our last tutorial we took a closer look at what the difference between a static and a dynamic list are. We then went ahead and created a static list in MIT App Inventor and now we're going to learn how to actually retrieve that information that's been entered. One thing to keep in mind about static lists is that this has preset data and that data is not going to change at any time while the app is actually running. Now we have two ways that we can actually retrieve this information. One way is by simply picking a random item from the list. This is going to identify all the indexes within your list and randomly select one of them. Now you do have a chance for the same list item to be selected multiple times when doing this. So the more choices you have, the better off you are of not repeating one of those list items. The second way is to pick a specific item from that list. And in order to do that, we would need to select the list item using its index. Now we're going to be picking a random item today, but towards the end of this activity, we're going to look at an extension where we can actually go ahead and select an item from its index and then have our program pull in sequential order each item from that list. But for right now, we're just gonna simply learn how to retrieve that information by picking a random item. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our MIT App Inventor and what we have created so far. So here you can see during our last session that we went ahead and created a global variable we initialize that global word phrase list variable to make a list of six different list items. We have six different items anywhere from going bowling all the way down to playing soccer. Now remember you could add as many or as few of these items as you would like. Now that we have our global variable, we have to figure a way of how we can actually get that preset data when it's need to be called. We're gonna call this data in a few different places. One, we're going to call it whenever we hit that word phrase button, we should see a new word phrase appear. If we hit the skip button or if our clock timer actually runs out. So if we're going to be doing this a few different times, what we're going to want to look at doing is creating a new variable that's going to make it easier for us to call that actual command to work. So let's go ahead to our procedure drawer. And from that procedure drawer, we're going to go ahead and call a to procedure do block. From here, we can go ahead and rename this and let's call this pick next word. And from there, we can go ahead and put our commands in. Now, what we basically need to have happen when we call that next word to appear is we want to have the item label in our user interface pick a random item from our list. So if we go back to our design view, what we're looking for to actually change here is this item label. So somewhere in this block, we're going to want to have that phrase appear. So we're going to change the text. And remember, our text right now is blank. So we're going to actually have that phrase appear right in the middle of that block. So in order to do this, we're going to go and find that item. So if we scroll down, we find our item label. And we're going to want to find the set item labels text. And once we go ahead and add that in, we're going to want to go ahead to our list and find our pick random item from list. And now we need to identify which list we are using. And since we've placed our list in a global variable, we're just simply going to go ahead and get that variable. And that's going to be called our global word phrase list. Now, anytime we go ahead and call that procedure to happen, it's going to go ahead and pick a random item being anywhere from bowling to building a campfire, having a food fight and so on to appear in that item label. Now, one other thing we have to keep in mind is that some of the design requirements from us also said that anytime we go to a new word or phrase, we should also reset the timer. So while we're in this procedure, let's go ahead and call our reset timer. So if we go into that procedure, we've already created another procedure called reset timer. So we're simply going to call that to happen as well. So now anytime we call that pick next word, we're going to basically set our item label text to pick a random number from our global word phrase list and reset the timer. Now the first place that this is going to happen is if we go ahead and click on that word phrase button. 
So we have our word phrase button up at the top of the screen. And if we click on that, that's where we want that word or phrase to appear. So once we find that word phrase button, let's select a new event handler called word phrase button click. And what we're going to have here is we're going to go ahead and call to pick our next word. Now we don't need to worry about resetting the timer because it's already within that procedure that we created. So that's going to all happen at one time when we go ahead and do that. So if we test that out on our app and we go ahead and select our word phrase, you should see that now we have having a food fight. Now you're going to notice that my clock isn't running because we haven't fully programmed that just yet unless we hit start timer. If we hit the start timer, you'll notice that the timer now started counting down. And if I pick a new word phrase list, that timer should go back to 30 seconds. So now that we're ready to kind of move on, we have to look at what our skip button is going to do. And our skip button should basically do the same thing. When we select that, not only are you going to lose a point here, but we're also going to go ahead and call that procedure to occur. So let's grab our procedure one more time and drop it in that skip button. So now when we go ahead and test it on our app, if we select our skip button, what you'll notice is that it goes to the next word or phrase, but it's also subtracted one from our score. So this is doing two different procedures when we click the skip button. It's decrementing the score along with picking the next word. Now the last place we need to look at adding this is going to be to our actual clock or timer. So if the global time left is equal to zero, we want our player one to start, we're gonna decrement the score, we're gonna set the clock to false, but we're also gonna go ahead and pick that next word. So make sure that that pick next word is within that if statement. Now you've created basically a procedure that's going to allow you to access the data that you have in your static list.